Natalie has a 3.93 GPA, 515 MCAT. She's published her neuroscience research in high impact journals. She's the vice president of a nonprofit that invested over $12,000 into women's health and infrastructure in India. She's the founder of an organization that helps connect immigrants to government programs like Medi-Cal. By many metrics, she is the perfect pre-med, but she has zero acceptances. This last admission cycle, we supported 16 pre-med students. Together, we've earned over 70 interviews to places like Harvard and Stanford. We've earned full ride scholarships to schools like Kaiser. My hope is that you can learn from our experience and get similar results as our students. Here's Sam sharing the great news with her family. No, come your check I want the same for you. I've helped thousands of pre-meds get into medical school over the last seven years, and I'm still learning. Natalie is one of those 16 students. She hasn't earned a single acceptance. I'll share the three lessons I learned from our students' results. You'll see everything from their interviews to acceptance rates. And because I'm learning just like you are, I'll ask a former admissions committee member at Duke what she thinks. Part one, student results. Here we have 16 students for a total of 74 interviews. And when you take a look at each individual student, you'll see that there are clear tiers. The highest tier of students have anywhere from seven to 10 interviews. The middle tier has somewhere between two to four interviews and the lowest performing tier of students all have at least one interview. If it's your first time and you feel overwhelmed, you're not alone. And of course, you'll want this to be your one and only time applying. And so we have to be obsessive about everything on our application. That obsession is how our students have done so well. And because we give each student the attention that they deserve, we only offer four spots per month until we're full for the cycle. So if you'd be interested in earning full ride scholarships to Kaiser, you want to interview with schools like Harvard, Wash U, Stanford, Mayo, Vanderbilt, Cornell, UC San Diego. Click the application cycle advising link to book a free strategy call now before we can't take on any more students. One thing we wondered is whether GPA and MCAT could explain why some students earned one interview and others earned 10. Here's our data. Natalie has a 3.93 GPA, 515 MCAT. She has one interview. Jerry has a 3.95 GPA, 514 MCAT. Another student of ours, same stats, and also just one interview. Sophia also has a 3.95 GPA, 514 MCAT. Identical stats as Natalie and Jerry, but she has eight interviews and a full ride acceptance to Kaiser. Amy has a 4.0 GPA and a 520 MCAT. She's one of our students with near perfect stats, but she only has three interviews. And maybe you and I came to the same conclusion. And that's lesson number one, that GPA and MCAT capture some of the results, but don't explain all of them. To fully understand these results, you'll have to look past the GPA and MCAT. You'll have to read real extracurriculars and see actual personal statements. And you can on our application database. I have eight full medical school applications that have been accepted to schools like UCSF, USC, and UC San Diego. In fact, my own application that got me into UCLA with no gap year is on that database. And I just collected 25 brand new applications. These include the 16 from this current cycle, so you can know exactly what is working right now. These pre-meds earned full ride scholarships to Wash U, Vanderbilt, and Kaiser. To be the first to see them, join our community of over 11,000 pre-meds. Click the application database link in the description box below now. Next, I wanted to look at pre-med medical school fit. You hear this concept all the time. And so I looked at where our students received interviews. Take a look at Sophia. Here are all of our interviews from one through number 74. And I'm going to go ahead and filter for Sophia. I want you to take a look at Sophia's interviews. CDU, Wayne State, Kaiser, UCSF, UCI, Georgetown, UCLA, UC San Diego, Geisinger Commonwealth, and one more I didn't mention, but just Mount. Mount Sinai this morning. And specifically, these programs, CDU, Kaiser, UCSF, she's invited specifically to the UCI Prime Latino Community Program, 
All of those have similar missions to serve the underserved communities of California. You see a similar mission fit for Georgetown and at Mount Sinai for the urban metropolitan underserved. And it's no surprise that Sophia's application matches these missions so perfectly. She taught hospital janitors English. She's not known for her stem cell research. She's a caseworker supporting 3,000 unhoused clients every single year. She is not a bioengineer. She is not 3D printing prosthetic limbs for Vietnam War veterans. Lesson number two, medical schools have a type. And so you need to present your genuine best self. Know who you are and make it clear on your application so the medical schools that fit perfectly with you can find you easily. Now I wanna revisit our interview data. And if you're anything like me, the thing that catches your eye most are these four to six students who have the least amount of interviews, one to two each. And something I found interesting is that GPA and MCAT do not explain the results. In fact, I left their GPA and MCATs here, and you'll find that for the most part, they are quite similar. A 3.9 or high 3.85 GPA with strong MCATs in the 514 to 516 range. When they submitted their primers, don't explain it. And while there isn't one thing that all six had in common, there is one thing that four of them have in common. Let's see if you can piece it together. During the application cycle, Jerry accepted a promotion to become the head medical assistant at his vascular surgery clinic. Tasha experienced some family health issues and burned out for a couple months during the application season. Harry took the MCAT three times in six months. First, his testing center had a software bug and everyone had to reschedule. Then during his second exam, his glasses broke, snapped right in half. He couldn't see a thing. So what do all three of these students have in common with Natalie? They all submitted secondaries 40 plus days after receiving them. And without late submissions, we see that our acceptance rate jumps to 83%. Lesson number three, submit high quality secondaries early. Late submissions may tell medical schools that you're not that interested. Now, even though our acceptance rate is 83%, here's what will improve to hopefully get to 100% next cycle. I've helped thousands of pre-meds for seven straight application cycles. If you're applying, you only wanna do it one last time and making the wrong decisions ultimately leads to your rejection from medical school. On average, medical school acceptance rates are 40%. For our students who apply on time, we're double that at 83%. If you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, it would be an honor to support you. But because we work so closely with students, we do have a strict cutoff on how many we support. Click the application cycle advising link below now before we're full. Part two, our mistakes. Natalie has great stats. She's world-class at advocating for under-resourced populations that are traditionally overlooked by healthcare. Her letters of recommendation are strong. Maybe it was that we submitted her secondaries late, but I'm always Always looking for what we can do better. And to help, I spoke to a friend of Premed Catalyst, Dr. Linda Shezik. So this is my conversation with former Duke Admissions Committee member, Dr. Linda Shezik. And she too is pretty puzzled on how Natalie's cycle turned out. Dr. Shezik shares, I agree it is puzzling. Just on the numbers alone, one would expect them to get some attention. But if I were to say anything, I think I would have loved to see some forward looking statements. Statements about how continued growth and how they wanted to develop more. Then I would have gotten a sense for how well they would have fit in at the program where I worked. But truthfully, she admits that this is a little bit of a stretch for her. I wish I had more to say. Perhaps they didn't jump off the paper. So I guess the only thing that would have warned me up to them more was a sense for where they saw themselves going so that I could picture them in my institution blossoming in that manner. Lesson number one. Medical school admissions isn't really about medical school. Medical schools are looking for the next leaders of healthcare. The people who will take the most advantage of the medical schools' resources and build an impactful 30 to 40 year career. To do that, your application has to be aggressive about conveying your potential. Here's Dr. Ian Hagman. Assistant Dean of Admissions at Wash U, St. Louis. The mindset for the applicant should be, how do I get myself accepted? How do I bring myself, bring my alignment with the institution, interview, make it apparent to the interviewer and to the committee that's reviewing me so that 
they move me into that pile of acceptance so that they see uh, the ways in which the school would be a great fit for me. At Pre-Med Catalyst, we'll be adding these two questions to our checklists. First, how well does our application clearly show promise of an influential career in healthcare? Second, how well does this secondary show this specific school that I will excel in their culture with their specific resources and their specific programs? At Pre-Med Catalyst, every student we work with starts with a meeting where we review the strength of their application. We talk about their goals and their expectations for the cycle, and we make sure that everyone is on the same page. But the application cycle is nine months long and things change. We talked earlier about Harry who took the MCAT three times in six months. Not only was Harry a senior in college taking a full course load, he was also an EMT, he was also doing research, he was also committed to all of his other extracurriculars while taking the MCAT three times in six months. As things evolved during his year, we needed to evolve too, but we didn't. Lesson number two, things change and we must too. At first, Harry wanted to desperately apply even if he submitted things months late. He was open to lowering his goals from top 20 medical schools to any MD. And while we recommended against it, we ultimately pushed forward and we haven't seen results. Harry has one interview. It doesn't have to be that way. Becoming a doctor is not a race. Learning from this experience, we've changed our systems. Now, when things change in the application cycle, we are more intentional about resetting expectations. We double down and help support our students through making the best decision with the new information available. In fact, this exact situation happened with Hamza. And together, we made the decision to wait a year until all of our ducks are in a row. I'm very hopeful that next year, Hamza will see fantastic results. Our last lesson comes from Jerry. He has great stats, 3.96 GPA, 514 MCAT. And during the cycle, he earned a promotion to become the head medical assistant. He started training other MAs and earned new responsibilities as a surgical tech in the operating room. And he took those 10 hours from the time he dedicated to write his application. His secondaries were submitted 50 plus days after he received them. Some ultimately were never submitted. Lesson number three respect the application. It's a full-time job. It's not a fourth priority you can do after 25 hours as an MA, 40 hours as a school student. It's not a fourth priority after spending 45 hours taking 21 units, doing 25 hours of research, and another 25 hours as the head MA. Now, we ensure that students have at least 15 hours per week to dedicate to just writing and we start as early as possible. In fact, our students this year have started as early as October, and they already have polished, finalized work and activity sections and personal statements before the new year. Those are the three improvements we've made from this cycle. And that's the truth behind how pre-med catalyst students are doing in the 2024 cycle. Not every student gets into medical school. Not every medical school admissions program has a 100% acceptance rate. But there are things that we can all do better. And as I learn, I'll share everything that works so that we can all get into our dream medical schools. If you liked this video, you'll love this video where I share seven years of brutally honest pre-med truth in seven minutes. Thanks for watching.